This is All Pets Allowed TV episode. Oh, what is it? What is the episode of the actual All Pets Allowed TV of this? These three, All Pets Allowed TV episode three. Um, it's confusing having different numbering systems. Okay, so uh, for a long time I've been promising these are table video guides, demonstrations, general talking about. <laughs> um, uh, this is for the ones that are in the Daily Quest, Beasts of Fable, book three. Um, if you haven't finished the original Beasts of Fable sort of quest line, you don't really know what I'm talking about. It turns into three dailies, one of them book one, book two, book three, and sort of divides all the Beasts of Fable up into three quest, daily quests, basically. Um, I chose book three because it is the one I do the most consistently. Um, I do all of them, but this is the one I do the most consistently, mainly because I figured out how to beat them quite easily, um, or consistently, and uh, also because they're in a really nice little triangular fly pattern that isn't spread out over the whole of Pandaria. Um, so you, there's Skidder Shia in Crossfire Wilds, just sort of down um, by the Temple of Chiji, I think. I think it is called Wild Ashar, and then um, just north of that, and then there's uh, Greyhoof, who is just up sort of the cliff from there on by the Stormstart Brewery, and then there is uh, Lucky Yee, who is the cricket in there by the Tillerers Farms, Tiller Tiller Farms, Tillerers Farms, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, I'm going to divide this into three parts in case people are coming just for one video at a time. This video will focus on uh, Skinner Shia, and then hopefully by tomorrow, the next day, the other two will be up there recorded, but you know, me actually editing them and putting them up is another issue. <laughs> okay, so uh, Skinner Shia, here we go. Um, first of all, Skinner Shia is aquatic. He has a nice little spit attack. It's very powerful, but he also does, um, like most of the water striders, he also has like a, a sort of a, um, is it a critter attack? Where it's sort of a biting attack. Um, so, so he's got two different kinds of attacks to sort of look out for. He's quite powerful and he knocks out quite a punch. Um, he's also quite fast, so you want to make sure you get some really fast pets. I recommend moths because they have the cocoon strike uh, as a mitigate, mitigation. Um, I used a Luyu, 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 Luyu moth in this one, but the Ashwing moth is very good, the Skywis moth is very good. Um, just make sure it's fast. If you don't have a breed identifier, at least make sure that you see up in your, uh, you should see in the in the battle thing what, what the speed is of your pet. I think at least a 289 um, is something I would get for this. Um, in this strategy, I use a hard to get pet. I'm sorry. Um, but I will tell you how to work around it, so don't um, turn it off right now. I used the Baneling, um, which is the uh, uh, StarCraft Heart of the Swarm Collector's Edition pet. Um, I love it because my son gave it to me, and I love StarCraft, um, as you might know. <laughs> and um, and uh, I named him Steak after my son. And um, the reason I use him is because he does... Uh, cool uh, sort of explode attack. It's a big giant attack. Um, he's a magic pet. And he does this big giant attack. Um, in the strategy, I use a wrong strategy. I, I use a sort of a crit chance addition ability, which is silly because he only explodes for a certain amount no matter what. So I know that that's silly in here. I should be using the speed one, and I do now. I just haven't recorded it. Um, if you don't have a bane wing, you might have legs. Who will do uh, a mana surge, uh, like a big explosion, uh, sort of surge, uh, a, a pet that explodes, uh, like Darkman Tonk explodes. Uh, I've forgotten which other mechanical pets actually explode, but once they do like a big, huge, giant attack that sort of incapacitates them afterwards or kills them afterwards, you want to use that as your first pet. Okay, so here we go. Um, there's three different fights here, so you can sort of see uh, how I approach different sort of versions of the same fight, because they never go quite the same. Okay, so here I am at Skidder Shia, Shia, and I have chosen my team. I have my Baneling, 
Um, it really doesn't matter what ability you have first here. The important thing is the second ability. Um, here, on this time, it's the first time I'm using him, I go with the crit, which is kind of silly. What you need is someone who's fast uh, and who can do one attack and then go in and really just do a big old explosion wallop. So there's a lot of pets that explode. There's um, a lot of the mechanical pets explode. Um, and the one uh, mana surge ones uh, are probably, would probably be good too. Then you go in with a fast pet um, that can increase its attack power with a shriek. And then um, a, just a massive attack. Not the little small attacks, the big massive attacks. And just keep going until you're not faster than Skidder or Shia anymore. Because once you're not faster than him, there really is sort of no point in uh, in continuing. Then I choose my Blight Hawk because he has to lift off to sort of uh, save himself, and also to just in case things don't go well, he can consume the uh, corpse at the very end. There we go, successful. Okay. So that went pretty quickly. I'm going to show you it again after going through a little um, talk here. So again, your first pet, I use the Baneling because he does a speed increase. So I make sure he goes first um, until I explode. Don't explode too late. So a Mana Surge does sort of the same thing. Um, it doesn't explode your pet, but the, um, the Baneling kills himself like he would in StarCraft. <laughs> um, and, um, but a lot of the mechanical pets will explode. Uh, the Dark Moon Tonk, uh, no, the Dark Moon Zeppelin included. Um, you should uh, check that out. Um, but then the, the next thing you want to do is get a moth, a moth that has that um, ability with the pink sheet thing that it, it puts himself in a cocoon, cocoon. It goes first, it puts itself in a cocoon, and then, um, and then does a massive big attack. Um, or if you have the ones that are really powerful that do lots of small little attacks. The Skidder does not have put a shield on himself, so there's nothing that will um, mitigate lots of lo small attacks on him like uh, a turtle would. So you're safe to use lots of small attacks. I like the big attacks because I feel like he has to be killed pretty quickly. I finished with the Blighthawk who has long, uh, good flying family attacks, good against aquatics. Um, because, uh, the Blighthawk is in the Eastern Plaguelands, by the way, because it has the liftoff, which is, you know, mitigation against the, the damage that the Skidderer does. Skidderer Shia does big, huge, massive attacks. So the, the trick is to keep your attacking pet alive long enough to actually do him damage. So the liftoff is good for that. Um, and then if things go badly, you have the... Uh, option to use consume corpse to keep the blight hawk alive long enough to actually finish him off. Um, so I'll show you the fight again with a slightly different, um, it's a, the fight one more time, but a different fight. If that makes sense. Okay. Okay, so here we go again. Again, starting with my baneling, but like I said, anything magic is good um, because. Uh, He's not going to hurt them too badly, but has had a bit of help. He does his bite. I don't actually use this uh, ability anymore. I should have recorded one when I used um, the speed of the It explodes pretty quickly. And then um, this is my uh, moth. Strike after that. I was successful with the little blinding thing there. Blocks his initial attack, so he's still fast. And then does uh, the little alpha strike. He's almost killed him all by himself. Got lucky with the blind either. But now, you see, he's dead. Um, usually, I prefer not to let them all die just in case. But um, Skidder Shia only has 148 left. Does a big strong attack on his dead. But there we go. Um, then you would need to use the lift off. Uh, I'll show you one more. Okay, here we go. Um, I actually can't start this battle because I'm levitating. I was fishing, so I'm levitating. Okay, this time, bite! 
spam. I don't, yeah, like I said, I don't actually use that ability anymore, so I didn't use it. I use it point, bite, and now I'm gonna have to explode. Oops, can't explode. Panic City, ah, oh, okay. Because if you don't get that big attack in, you need to really just start over. Because that's why I like to do it first, because I want to make sure I get in. Okay, trying again. So, basically, don't leave it too late to do the big explosion, is what this is supposed to demonstrate. I risked it with trying to do another bite before. Bad idea, so this time I don't. The Luyu Moth. Um, the Ashwing Moth is good for this, too. And the um, other moth from Out on Time was all the Skywis Moth. Cocoon while you're still faster. So watching your speed compared to his is actually important. It's not just any old moth. You want a fast one. And now I switch because I'm slower. Now this one wasn't an easy win, so you'll see how I sort of have to use the stuff. Okay, so I feel pretty sick, so I'm going to consume um, the corpse of the Baneling. And then I'm going to lift off for this next attack. Because that would have hurt. Got him. And I'm going, oh, 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 I hope he doesn't kill me. But if he does, I am undead. So I get an extra turn. Panic City, I get one more turn. Ha ha. There you go. And it, it becomes a win because my moth is still alive. Even though the Blight Hawk died. Okay, I hope that helps. I know I used the Baneling, I'm sorry, but like I said, anything that explodes will do the same trick, really. And there you go. Um, hopefully Lucky you will be up real soon. Um, I'm hoping to get it done today. Okay, good luck. See ya.